Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, Rich snobs trespassed and parked on farmer's property. They get taught a lesson they will never forget. Don't mess with a farmer. My parents raised me to be a good, honest person who respects people and their space, but does not take crap from anybody. Because of that, I have always considered myself to be a nice and patient man, but these damn city folks that kept parking on my property learned what happens when you piss off a quiet countryman like me. First of all, I have several acres of growing land that I use for crops. I'm a farmer, that's what I do. My neighbors own a garden center that they also turned into a local flea market. I never really had an issue when they just sold plants because it did not attract as much of a crowd, but now that they opened up the flea market too, I've got people crawling all over the place parking on my land. The owner, Gary, of the flea market and garden center had to expand the business out into the parking lot so he had more room for sellers booths. I get why he did it, but that means that most of the parking spaces are gone, making people resort to cars sitting in my adjacent field. I was patient at first with the situation, because it was not growing season, so I did not need the field. I did bring up to Gary that I was tired of the cars parking on my property, and he was apologetic and said that he would be sure to talk to his customers. I also put up some no parking signs to see if that would help. Well, it didn't. I would watch these people pull right up, park, look at the sign and still walk into the flea market. I was also finding trash on my property clearly from Gary's customers because they were usually bags or receipts from his business. Some people were even throwing plastic cups and silverware not just onto my field but into my yard that was multiple feet from where they wanted to park. One lady that drives some fancy Range Rover even lets her giant dog take a crap in my yard every morning. I even caught her mud rummaging around my composite bin and trash cans, knocking things over while the owner was rummaging through the flea market finds. And well, ripe stars, I would say that the owner and the dog were rummaging basically through the same things. Anyway, I continued to express for several months that I wanted his customers off my property. It got to a point where Gary and I had a verbal altercation over the issue. He was saying that I was just being some cranky old man that was being difficult just because I could be. What an a-hole. I don't drive onto his property and park my farm equipment, maybe I should. Growing season picked up and I was still struggling with keeping Gary's flea market fairies off my field. I ended up putting up caution tape or rope to try and make an obvious statement about no parking, clearly blocking off the areas. A few of his customers paid attention and avoided my property, but others like the Range Rover lady drove right over and disregarded the tape completely. When I went to confront some of them saying that I needed to work the fields, they either ignored me or said that they wouldn't be but a moment and left their cars anyway. Basically, if it is not convenient for them, then I should just deal with it. Yeah sir, I know I'm not supposed to park here, but if you could just let me, that would be great. Entitled little people. Range Rover pulled up and let her dog out with no leash or supervision like usual, but I stood in my yard and proceeded to block him or chase him away with my oversized deck broom. She came running out of the flea market when she saw me shooing him, her purse swinging and sloshing her expensive coffee onto her hands. Excuse you, what do you think you're doing? She says incredulously, opening her door to let her dog in. Get in the car, away from the mean man, Charlie. It's okay. Okay. She shushes her dog like he is an upset child having a tantrum. I could not help but roll my eyes at her. How dare you attack my dog? I could sue you, you know. She started pointing her finger at me and using her big city intimidation voice bobbing her head from side to side as incoherent words fell out of her mouth. When she finished talking, she started walking away, assuming I did not have anything to say. 
Ma'am, if that dog comes onto my property again and takes a crap, I'm going to shove it up your fancy SUV's tailpipe. Her mouth hung slack, shocked that I would even threaten her with such a thing probably, and yep, that's right, I said and walked back towards my barn. I could hear her asking others if they heard what horrible things I just said to her. Most of them were sympathetic to her issues and coddled her design-wearing whiny entitled ass. I chose to carry on with my day. This was just the start of the problems to be honest. From that day forward, Range Rover Woman had it out for me. The following week after the incident, I had been spending most of my time tilling the fields for seeding. Of course, the section of the field closest to the flea market was still a problem for me. These idiots don't ever listen, they kept parking there even after months of talking with Gary, putting up tape and asking the customers to stay off my property. A friend of mine suggested putting up a fence, but that is not possible with farming land. I have huge machines that need plenty of room to move around and having a fence in the way makes that impossible. I went out to my mailbox one morning and found a letter from the city, saying that there had been complaints regarding noise on my property. It went on to state that my loud farm equipment should only be used during daylight hours, otherwise the sound can disturb the neighbors. What farmer works at night time? I don't even understand the point in this letter. I had not been working in the dark. Who would complain about that? I had a suspicion, that's for sure. The next day, Range Rover pulls up with her crappy dog and gives me this condescending, arrogant smile. Like, how would you like the letter that I got sent to you? Kind of look. Instead of saying anything, I proceeded to give her the finger from where I stood on my porch and she of course let her dog run around freely. I then noticed as I was getting ready to do more field work that her and three other cars were taking trash out of their vehicles and throwing it on the ground. A lot of trash too, like they had been saving for a whole week just to dump it onto my land. To me, this action is clearly intentional and then I look over and see her stupid dog pooping in my yard again. I have had it. The straw had finally broken the camel's back. In a moment of sheer don't give a damn frustration, I hopped onto my tilling tractor and headed over to where they all parked in my field. Without even stopping, I went right towards them. I know I could have hurt someone, but these people are a bunch of pansies and were not going to stand there while I ran them over. Almost as if I was just casually plowing the fields, I drove right into their vehicles, shoving them all into each other and off of my yard. Sure, plenty of damage was done to their cars, but I did not care. I backed up and took out the next row of two or three vehicles. I saved Range Rover for last. I could hear her screaming the entire time. Don't you dare to touch my car, I will sue you. I did not care. I pushed her car around the field in a circle before I shoved it into the line of other damaged vehicles. I then made sure to give her Range Rover one final blow and lifted up the shovel on the front of the tractor and broke her windshield. Yeah, I was in some trouble after this, but not as much as you would think. Thankfully, because they were on my property, the damage I did was not entirely unwarranted. I lawyered up and had to spend a little money to cover some of what I had done, but at the end of the day, I cannot help but feel like I was the clear winner here. Just the satisfaction of breaking her fancy vehicle was enough for me. And ripe stars, I gotta say, as usual, you know the saying, never mess with a farmer and never before has it been as true as in this story. That was just one bit of absolutely juicy revenge. And by the way, if you enjoy the stories about farmers getting revenge on entitled neighbors and other awful people, then please don't forget to also like the video if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your support is very much appreciated. The next one is titled Entitled Neighbor. The story begins with Entitled Neighbor having a couple of trees on the border of my family's property that he wanted taken down. This was kind of odd as these trees had been there since long before he moved in and were in no way damaged or diseased. But hey, it is his property and who am I to judge? 
Anyway, in the process of talking to my mom about it across yards, I was present for this conversation, he casually dropped that he would need to have some heavy equipment in to take down the trees, to which my mom basically said, uh, that's alright, why do you mention it? En responded something along the lines of, well, it would need to go through your property to get to the trees. The way he said it was kind of condescending, as if it was obvious somehow. Mother objected to this, since Entitled Neighbor's Yard was by all means capable of accommodating the machinery in question without causing harm to their property. En got in quite the huff about this, saying something to the effect of, well, I don't want it going through my property, and besides, you have a driveway they can use. Faced with the fact that En was clearly not going to back down on this right now, M ended the conversation and thought nothing of it. Keep in mind, my family is not that well off and our driveway had not been repaved in years and thus it was showing signs of wear like cracks and ruts. This meant that a bunch of heavy landscaping equipment going back and forth over it would almost certainly make that worse. Fast forward a few months later. My family goes on a trip, I'm not exactly sure where at the moment, I think it was to see family in the next state over, and we come back and our yard is a mess. En had gotten the landscapers out while we were gone and lied to them, saying that my family had given permission to use our yard and driveway. Several bushes and small trees in our yard were completely torn up, along with several fruit bushes M had been working for years to neatly cultivate. Oh, and there was also a giant hole in our backyard. This would end up collecting stormwater from our neighbor's property into ours, where it would become stagnant and host an insane amount of mosquitoes in warmer months. I won't get into it now, but this is a whole other story of entitlement and would almost result in a civil case against EN. Eventually we paid around 800 bucks to have it filled in. He was a lawyer and promised to financially drain us if we sued him. Of course, we were furious that this POS had the audacity to lie to the landscapers and completely wreck one side of our yard and driveway. I can distinctly remember a phone conversation on speaker with my mom about to lose it at Entitled Neighbor. She was saying how this was going to potentially cost the family thousands to fix it, it in fact did, and how EN had to pay for lying about having our permission. He essentially just laughed it off and said something like, it was entirely within my rights, and if you don't stop the issue now, I might try applying for an easement on that land. After all, I've been taking care of it, and I know the law. That last part is verbatim what he said, and I still recall it clear as day. This was obvious BS, and my mom knew it, but again, he was very prodigious about being a respected lawyer, and they were intimidated by that. So now down a couple of thousands from the driveway and yard repairs and under the threat of having their property taken from us, my mom did not go any further with it. Thinking this was the end of it, we continued on with our lives and vowed not to say a single word to entitled neighbor. Fast forward again about a year and out of nowhere a dog fence is put in again on my family's property. EN then has his landscaper start taking care of the area on top of the dog fence as if it were his property. Knowing what was about to happen, my mom decided she had had enough and talked to EN again. EN basically said, that property is now basically mine and I'm getting an easement to make it official. My mom being an architect and having experience with landscape design and property disputes knew what she would have to do next. She brought out a surveyor to find the property markers and sure enough the dog fence was thoroughly in my family's yard. After more back and forth EN finally agreed to move the fence onto his side of the property but not before threatening an easement claim again. I would like to say that he got some sort of comeuppance for what he did, but unfortunately he got off completely free. My family is in a better position now financially, but we are far past the statute of limitations for filing a case. And yeah, ripe stars, unfortunately there is no real happy ending to this story, but as I always say, these are real stories, not fake made up ones, so there is not always a happy ending. The next one is titled, Neighbor goes to developer to enforce a rule to protect their view. 
It backfires. This story is not me, but my girlfriend's parents. They were going to build a house in a new development in a lot that was in front of their to be neighbors. The lot is on a hill, so it is in front of the neighbors, but below them. The neighbors decided that they wanted to build a one story rancher on the lower part of their lot instead of building something like a two story on the higher side of the lot. They assumed that whoever was going to build in front of them would only build a one story themselves which would keep their view unobstructed. Having a great view was apparently very important to them and a big selling point on the lot. Her parents started to build their two-story house on their lot with tall peaked gables. When the neighbors realized their view will indeed be obstructed, they offered to buy the lot off of her parents. Her parents give them the price of the lot, which had increased in value since it was originally purchased, plus the cost of the materials already purchased for the build. They waited for a response but did not get one, so they just continued on with their build. A month or two later the neighbors respond to the offer saying they will accept it, but this time of course more time and money has been put into the build, so her parents told them they can still buy the lot, but the price has increased. The neighbors reject the offer. In this new development all houses are required to have a two foot overhang, but many of the homes have not actually been following the rule and the developers have not been enforcing it. Her parents decided to also not follow the rules. The neighbors then go to the developer to remind them that her parents need to have two foot overhangs, thinking that it would decrease the pitch of the roof. Meaning the gables wouldn't be so high, the developers tell her parents to make sure they have the two foot overhangs. Her parents go to the architect to find a way to keep the tall gables they wanted while also having the two foot overhangs. The architect tells them to just raise the roof two feet to create the two foot overhang so the angles on the roof won't be impacted at all. Her parents keep building with these new specs. The developers approach her parents to inquire about the overhangs and if their roof was impacted at all. The look on his face when her parents told him that they just raised the whole roof by two feet was priceless. The neighbors avoided her family the entire five years they lived there. And the next one is titled, Don't pay us, enjoy your trip. About 10 years ago when I was a teenager, I was an extra in an indie zombie film. The film never had a cinema release, so I doubt anyone reading this has seen it, but it was relatively high budget for an indie film. 50 plus extras all supposed to be being paid 100 pounds a day, we were on set for 5 days. The set was in a recently closed prison slash hospital. It was a fun experience, I got to see how a film was made and meet some cool people. Honestly, I probably would have done it for free for the experience if I was asked. Anyway, we finish up our parts, on set for 14 hours for 5 days, ask about payment and told we will be paid when the film releases. At this point I am doubtful we will be paid. About a year later I was with my friends who I was on set with and we realized that no one has been paid and then I remember I still have the director's phone number. He never had my number but I had his. So I phone him with the intention of asking what was happening. He answers the phone and says, hey Scott is that you? The cocks behind my eyes start turning and I say, yes. Ah, how is things? Is it ready now bud? Um, yeah, that's it ready mate. Brilliant, I'll be up in a few hours. Cool, see you soon mate. I hang up and the room collectively bursts out laughing, wondering what we have just set into motion. A few hours pass and we call back, he answers. This is not Scott, I just drove 200 miles to pick up equipment that was not ready. At this point everyone is pissing themselves laughing, someone shouts, that's what you get for not paying people. I hung up and that was that. Maybe a bit harsh, but he screwed 50 plus people out of 500 pounds worth of wages. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist, which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen.
In addition, I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel, but also turn on the bell notifications, which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore, if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube, then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.